Welcome. This is the first video in the database querying training series. I hope that you find what you're looking for in this series and you're aided in your path to either increase your SQL skills or to obtain SQL Server certification. Today we're going to talk about what SQL Server certifications are available and we're going to focus on the certifications for Microsoft SQL Server 2012. With each version of SQL Server, Microsoft has changed the certifications that are available and the requirements to obtain those certifications just a little bit and 2012 isn't any exception to that. We're going to talk about what you need to do to receive those certifications and what you can do to prepare yourself for those certifications. First, let's look at what certifications are available in 2012. The entry level certification is called an MCSA and that's really the foundation for all the other certifications that Microsoft offers for SQL Server. Once you have the MCSA, you can move on to the other certifications, but you have to have that first as kind of the foundation. The second level after MCSA is an MCSE, and at that point it splits into two different paths. One path is a data platform path. The other path is business intelligence. You can choose to go down both paths, but they are separate and they are not, they're not related. For the data platform path, there's a certification beyond the MCSE, and that's an MCSM. Now, what do all these acronyms mean? We're throwing those around, so let's define those really quick. MCSA stands for Mountain Club of South Africa, and an MCSE stands for Minesweeper Consultant Solitaire... Wait, I think this is the wrong slide. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> MCSA stands for Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate where an MCSE is a solutions expert and an MCSM is a solutions master. So what does it take to obtain each of these? Well, each of these certifications is obtained by going through a series of exams. Uh, if you pass the exams, then you get the certification. Now, currently, the, the capstone certification is this solutions master at the top of the data platform. There isn't a certification offered that's higher than that. In SQL Server 2008, there was a certification that sat here on top of the master. And it was called, a, it, was, it was a certified architect. Now, I haven't seen anything that indicates that Microsoft is going to offer that certification, that architect level certification for SQL Server 2012. But I also haven't seen anything that says that they're going to discontinue it either. So it's a little ambiguous right now whether or not there will be another certification available. But it, there at least used to be, in the past, an architect level certification that sat on top of the master and was the capstone of the certification path. Well, the one that we're going to focus on today is this foundational certification, the MCSA. So what does it take to obtain that MCSA? Well, there are three exams for the MCSA. A querying exam, an administering exam, and a data warehouse exam. Now these exams don't need to be taken in any particular order, but I am going to talk about them in the order you see here from left to right. The first exam is a Microsoft querying exam. This exam is going to test your ability to write SQL queries, create and maintain SQL objects like tables and stored procedures, views. It's going to test your ability to uh, do some basic error checking. Uh, the administering exam is going to cover your, your ability to install SQL Server. Uh, to install all of the components of SQL Server, to administer uh, disaster recovery and failover recovery, backup and restore, and to cover the administration side of SQL Server. The data warehouse exam is going to focus primarily on integration services and it'll go into reporting services a little bit, but it doesn't go a lot into analysis services. So a data warehouse exam is primarily focused on getting data into and out of SQL Server in a bulk mass type environment. The MCSE level for the data platform, uh, the tests will cover topics on database development and design, which will somewhat be covered in the querying administering sections of the MCSA, but they go a lot further in depth. Likewise, the business intelligence will build a little bit on the data warehouse that you've done before with analysis, uh, with uh, integration services, reporting services, take those to greater depth, but also test your ability to create solutions and models inside of analysis services. There are two tests for the data platform. These tests actually have to be taken in order. The knowledge exam is taken first, 
And it's similar to the other exams for the certifications below it, except that, it, again, it goes further in depth and requires a greater depth and breadth of knowledge. The lab exam is quite a different beast, where the other exams are taken on a computer and there's a series of questions that you provide the answers to. The lab exam is taken on a virtual machine. You still sit down in front of a computer, but instead of a series of questions, you're given a series of tasks that you have to perform. You perform those tasks on the virtual machine and then submit that to Microsoft for grading to see whether or not you pass the exam. So that's a little bit of a different beast composed of the others. So this, this training series is going to focus on the querying exam that's required for the MCSA certification. So what does this querying exam consist of? Well, the exam has been given a number, and it's often referred to by the number, and the number that's given is 70-461, 7461. The 7461 covers four topics, creating database objects, working with data, modifying data, troubleshooting, and optimizing. And each of these four sections are covered pretty much equally on the exam. So you can expect about a quarter of the questions to cover creating database objects, a quarter of the questions to cover troubleshooting and optimizing. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the test is going to be organized. When we expand a little bit more in detail, creating database objects is going to test your ability and knowledge to design, create, and alter objects inside of the database, whether that's a table or a view or a trigger, but how you are able to maintain those and develop them in a way that meets a set of requirements. Working with data is going to test your ability to uh, work with to query data out of SQL Server. So you need to have a good knowledge of the data types, how to work with uh, select statements, derived tables, subqueries, uh, ranking, and aggregates. Modifying data is going to focus on uh, proper use of stored procedures and functions, CRUD statements. Now I have to, I have to make one clarification statement here on CRUD. You can see that uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the term CRUD, it stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete which very loosely corresponds to an insert, select, update, and delete statement in most database systems. I've crossed the R out here, not because the read or the select isn't covered on the test, but because that read and select was covered here in this section here and working with data. So the R part's covered up here, and the CUD part is covered down here in the modifying data. But the, as a whole, CRUD is, is part of the test. And in the troubleshoot and optimize section, Microsoft's going to test your ability to use indexes and think in a set-based format. Also, managing transactions, isolation levels, and doing some simple error handling. So what is the certification test like? Well, the test is administered at a testing center, and the closest testing center to us is in Lehigh at the Mountain Lion Applied Technology College. They have a Prometric testing center there, and you make arrangements with them and make a schedule appointment, and then go in for your appointment and sit down and take the test. The test is pass or fail. Uh, you're, it's not graded on a scale, um, and you need a score of 700 to, to pass. But a score of 701 is a passing score, just like a score of 955 is a passing score. Now, Microsoft doesn't publish their grading criteria and their grading methodology. But from what I've seen taking certification exams and from what other people have seen as well, it seems like that score of 700 is out of a possible of 1,000. So you don't need to know everything. You don't need to get a perfect score, but you do need to have a fairly good grasp. So a score of 700 out of 1,000, that roughly equates to about a C. If you can get a C on the test, you pass. If not, then you get to try again. You do have to pay to take the exam, and it runs about $150. But Microsoft or Prometric will periodically offer some discounts or promotions that can bring down the cost of the test. Sometimes they'll offer a promotion where if you buy a group of tests together, say, ah, oh, I'm going to buy a pack of three, you pay for all three up front, you get a discount on them so that it, the total cost comes out to be less than it would be otherwise. I've also seen them offer a package where if you pay full price for a test and then happen to fail it, you can retake the test for free. You have to get a voucher to do that. and. Uh, there's a, a sign-up process, but that's kind of a nice way to go into the test knowing that you've at least got two shots to pass. And you don't have to pay extra for the second one. On the previous slide, I had a list of topics covered by the exam. And if you go out to Microsoft's website, and I have a link to that here, 
that's specific for the 7461 exam, you'll find that they have an expanded list that has a little bit more information. If you want to print off an itemized list of the topics that could be on the test, you can go here and get, and get a better idea of the topics that are going to be covered. Likewise, on Microsoft Certification site, there is a section that outlines the types of questions that could be on the exam. This is a great resource. They have a series of videos, each one showing a different type of question that could be on the exam, whether it's multiple choice or uh, take this group of objects and order them in the correct order. And it will walk you through how the test environment works. You won't actually see actual questions from the test, but you'll have an idea then what the test will look like so that when you go in to take the exam, you can, uh, you can be ready for what they might have. Now I understand that not everybody going through this training series is, going, is interested in certification. And to be honest, even though there's a lot of items covered on the test, and it's a great way to make sure that you're getting a good broad coverage of database topics, this training series is also great if you're just looking to increase your skills. Either way, you're welcome to skip around to the videos that cover a topic that you want to learn more about or want to brush up on. Whether you're preparing for the exam or just trying to get a little better, at, at writing and optimizing queries, this is a great re resource to, uh, to help yourself take that next step. So whether you're trying to prepare for the test or just trying to increase your skill, how do you increase your retention beyond what you get here in these videos? Well, look through some of these examples here and see if there's something that has worked for you in the past that can help you to really grab a hold and maintain the knowledge that you're going to get. Perhaps it's beneficial for you to take notes while you're watching the video and then later either review the notes or use those notes to go back and find a spot in the video that you want to look at again. Maybe if you, look, if you work really well with books, you can find a, a text that covers basic development, database development topics and follow along with that. While you're watching the video, you also have a book reference to go to to get uh, another perspective. If you like interaction with other people, you can create a study group or join a users group not only to network with other people, but to get an idea of what they've used that's worked in the past and find some people that you can bounce questions off of when there's a concept you don't understand or want a little clarification through. Throughout this training series, we'll provide examples showing how a particular concept is used or can be implemented. Take those examples and do them yourselves on your own system so that you can have an opportunity then to actually implement part of what you're learning. This last step may be a little more difficult, but if you prepare yourself to teach someone else what you've learned, you'll find that not only do you focus more while you're in the process of learning, but while you're explaining it, new questions will come to your mind that you want to research or go back and review. And it'll help you to get a more complete training and also understand which areas you need to maybe review a bit more. Now there are some things you maybe shouldn't do. I don't recommend that you tattoo your arms or any other part of your body with topics out of the books online. That's SQL Server's or Microsoft's um, user guide, help text for SQL Server. Uh, hypnotism may not be the best way to go. Uh, taping a book to your body and trying to learn by osmosis or cramming the night before the exam, I don't think any of those are necessarily going to help you too much. Also, while you're searching the internet looking for help with the test, you may come across some sites that, act that have actual questions from the test posted. It may be tempting to go to those sites to, to enhance your study and get an idea of the actual questions that could be on the test. Don't do that. That is a bad idea. Um, not only is it of questionable legality to have that information on the internet, but if Microsoft finds that you've used a brain dump to study for the test, they could come back and revoke your certification and potentially ban you from receiving certifications in the future. Since you're in this, to either increase your skill and your knowledge or to prepare for the certification so that you actually have a base of knowledge that you can present to someone else, don't use a brain dump. It's going to short circuit your learning and it's not going to help you retain the information that you really need to know. Here's some examples, some specific examples of the, the retention topics that I had on the previous slide. Uh, if you're looking for a good book, uh, Beginning SQL Server Programming by Paul Atkinson and Robert Vieira is a great text. It covers a broad range of basic database development topics and uh, has really good coverage of the topics that will be on the test. 
In the past, when we've taught this course in a classroom environment, this is the book that we've used as a text, and it's worked out really well. Microsoft Press also publishes a training kit that's specifically targeted for this exam. It's a good resource as well, and it has a couple advantages. One is that it has a CD in the back of the book, and that CD contains a practice exam, not with questions off the real test, but with some questions similar to what would be on the test. That allow you to get a good idea of what the test will feel like, how to interact with the testing system, and give you an idea of which areas you might want to go back and study some more. Frequently, Microsoft will also stick a, a voucher code inside the book that will give you a discount on the test when you go to take it. If you're looking for a group of people, uh, go to sqlpass.org and find a local users group that's near you. The Utah County SQL Server Users Group currently meets here in our building on the second Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. Come and stay for all or part of this session. Meet other people who are working on SQL Server in your community and get a group of people that you can ask questions to and contact when, you, when you're struggling with a particular concept or trying to implement something and, and hitting a brick wall. I've listed here a couple of my favorite websites. Uh, those are great places to go and get uh, more knowledge as well, as well as uh, books online. In the next session, we'll talk a little bit more about books online and what it is and how to access it. Essentially, it's Microsoft's help file uh, user manual for SQL Server. So it's got a lot of topics in there, great place to go and study and learn a little bit more about a specific area of SQL Server. And of course, again, I can't stress the importance of practicing too much. Once you actually sit down and start typing out a query or creating a table and designing, designing a series of tables, you'll find that you, the, concepts that you have will, the, the concepts that you're learning about will sink in a lot better and uh, they'll stay with you a lot longer. Now this video series, you can, you can expect it will cover all the skills on the test. Like I mentioned before, if you're not interested in certification, these are still the basic skills that you'll need to be successful working with databases. We'll have a natural progression. The, the topics will build upon each other, so you don't have to worry about a topic being suddenly completely out of your depth. We'll have a natural progression from easy to hard through the topics that are going to be covered. And we'll have examples of each one all the way through, so you can actually see it in practice and actually see it the, the topics and the, con the concepts in use. Now, as you could maybe ex understand from a couple of the slides prior to this, it's going to be a little bit of humor thrown in, and I hope that that actually helps you to uh, maybe engage a little bit more and not fall asleep. It's part of my personality, and it's going to come out in my presentations as well. Now, next time, in the next session, we're going to cover SQL tools. We're specifically going to talk about what an instance is, since that's the base unit of SQL Server and what you connect to when you want to run a query. We're also going to talk about Management Studio, how to use it to write simple queries, since we're going to be using that through the rest of the rest of the sessions. We'll also talk about books online, how to get additional help from there and um, integrate that into your environment. All right, that wraps up the notes that I have on SQL Server 2012 certification. If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me in any one of three different ways. You can either stop by my desk and I'll answer your question in person, or you can send me an email and I'll reply back. Or you're also welcome to catch me on Twitter at EBHAD and I can answer your questions that way as well. Thank you and we'll see you in the next session.